Part two of how to survive losing a job in a pandemic. All right. So we talked about the value and like we talked about my story and how I've lost two jobs during a pandemic. One job that I loved and I just lost because, you know, the pandemic hit and I wasn't allowed to be with people because we were all on lockdown here in Chicago. And I live in a major city, the third largest city in the world, Chicago, Illinois. Not on the outskirts, in the freaking city with all taxes. So we talked about that and then we talked about how I lost my second job that treated me really badly and where I was disrespected. Now, the second video is dedicated to resources. There are different resources that we have in this world and this is where my social work side and my spiritual side are going to come out. Everything is spiritual, but I, I'm being very intentional about this, this side of me. So as a social worker, I learned there are different resources available to people who are in need. And so the need when you lose your job is resources that help you to stay afloat. One of the main needs of, excuse me, I'm drinking a little bit of Coke because I'm a little bit tired. Coca-Cola. I'm a little bit tired. There's a little bit of Coke in here. Not coffee. I'm not really a coffee girl. But, um, I just like it. It's very refreshing. But um, one of the biggest needs that we as humans need is food and water. So the biggest things that I've needed during this, and I'll talk about food and water in a second, but I gave that example for a reason. The biggest things that I needed help with during the pandemic was my rent, paying for food, and like small bills like um, my electric bill and my f um, phone bill and my car and my um, car insurance and like things for the cats. That's really what I needed. I wasn't really into like savings or anything like that. Um, so going back to the example of food. When you are, when we are going through something in a pandemic like job loss, you have to humble yourself. And I know that some people think that standing outside of a church in line with people that might that might have never had a job might be degrading to you, but you need to do it. There are people who have tons of food that they are willing to give away. If you have friends, so stand in that line. First of all, before we go into the friendship thing, stand in that line and claim those resources. I haven't had to do that recently because I have friends that take care of me. And so transitioning into the friendship part, be super honest with your friends about what is going on with you. And I don't mean the friends that judge you and they're trying to like who, when you've lost your job and you don't, it's not your fault that are like, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Like that just go into worry mode. I have friends that are like that. And it just, it's not the energy that I want to entertain at this point in my life because I believe that things are better. You need to have people who like are going to stand by you and say, how can I help you? What do you need? And when people ask you that question, think about the resources that you really need because not everyone can pay for your, for all your bills, but you can go to someone's house for dinner. A lot of people have like, for example, if they're a big family and they have like a lot of meat or something, they're, they can cook like an extra piece of chicken or like vegetables or rice or whatever for you. You can do that. Some people can give you a gas card. Some people can give you like thousands of dollars because they have it in their account and they have it like, you know, and don't feel bad for taking that from someone. If you're someone who you know you can pay it back and it might take you time, use those resources. You know, don't be so proud that you can't take something from somebody who really, really wants to give. People want to give. Like, yes, we live in a very individualistic society where the government has made this lie that, like, we're only out here to fend for ourselves, which in many ways we are. We are nobody's going to come and rescue you. But your friends can come to the rescue in times where they can rescue you. In the sense of if you're very, like, objective and very clear about the things you need, like, hey, I need $30 for gas this week. Somebody could buy you a gas card. Hey, can I come to your house to eat dinner like a few days a week? Hey, can I be in line for, you know, this food basket or whatever? Hey, can you pay my um, insurance bill this month? You know, use those resources. The universe is abundant. And one of the things that we're abundant with is people. 
people want to help you. There are some people that have, who just make more money than you if you haven't tapped into abundance. And that when you make money, you can give it back to them. Or you can do an exchange of value. I, um, if you can pay my car bill, I'll watch your kids. If you can pay my car bill, I'll, t I'll do errands for you. Like, give something to someone, of va give something of value to people. But then if you have really good friends, some of them are just going to be like, you really need to just sit and relax. You know, and I know it's hard to, to sometimes do that, but you need to really sit and relax. But back to resources. Another thing that you really need to do for example, if you have like an electric bill or you have um, like your car note or whatever, ask them how long you have before they repossess your car. Like when I first got my car repossessed in 2020, when did it happen? 2021, I was not intentional about talking to my car people because I had so much shame at that time about losing this or maybe it was 2020, losing my car. I remember I walked down my Hyundai Elantra was gone and I was like, oh, someone stole my car. And I realized, holy shit, my car was repossessed. But I didn't do the research because I also I was so in shock at that all these things were happening that I lost my job. It was the first time that I had like that we were in a pandemic where we were all alone and like that there were like that we couldn't go out and that even if you did get a job, you had to be masked up and that there might be a virus that might attack you. Like those are very important things. Um, but call your comment people. Ask them like, hey, can we do a payment plan or I can't afford it right now? Like, you know, can, can you still keep my electric bill on? Or call your phone bill and say, hey, can I do a payment plan for this on the third? Call your internet people. Like, call. Talk to them. Use the resources. Also, if you're unemployed, claim your unemployment benefits. I don't advocate for people staying on assistance programs forever. But I do think these programs assist you when you're in need. Do not be so proud that you do not claim your assistance. You know, don't do it. Because we live in an abundant universe. There is enough for everybody. There is enough for everybody. There are resources out there, resources out there for everybody. The government and people might tell you that there is not, but there really is enough for everybody. You just have to go out there and get it. This is why I love this tiger, because tigers remind me to be fierce. Like, I'm showing you this to be like, go out there and get the shit that you need for your life. Get the stuff you need for your life. Don't be ashamed. Tigers have to like literally go and search for food in places that they might not even like. But they need to get the resources. Get the resources you need for your life. Be vicious and be tenacious. Be tenacious because vicious can, can have a negative connotation. Be tenacious about getting things. The last resource that I will talk about, which will transition into part three, is understand the resource of abundance. And I'm going to have to make a whole video on abundance because there's so much that I've learned over this last month that so many people do not, still to this day, don't get. And the first thing I will say is tap out of all the people that do not understand abundance. You might be coming in spiritual, a very spiritual, you might be become, you might be in the process, let's just say that, of becoming a spiritually enlightened being like I am, where I understand so clearly now so much and that, that I'm like, there's so much to learn and like the trees are so big, like all this stuff and like colors are more vibrant and all this stuff. If you are in a place where you are on your shit and people are, are still stressed around you or they're trying to stress you out, you really need to tap out of those people. And if you feel lonely, tap into the resource of nature and abundance, knowing that Though you might be alone right now, and though you might have to stay at home by yourself because you can't afford to go out, that you can do things that are free. Go out for a walk. Go into the nature. Go go look at the dirt. Go like stare at the trees. Like tap into these different things. And so this is all I'm going to say for the resources video because um, I want to really the third video is the most important one I think. Like the first one was my story. The second video was on resources, which I think that everybody needs to tap into the resources for their area and see what is available for your area that you can like get, especially in the Western world. We have all these benefits, but even in other places, like are there resources of people around you that you can like borrow something from them or do something in exchange for that? Maybe you don't have money, but you can exchange the energy of like, I'll give you something of value if you give me something of value that will help me. That's how businesses have been created, and that's how you've created money. Part three, spirituality, coming up.